So consciousness is peace. The innate nature of consciousness, of quality of consciousness, is peace. Peace and freedom. Borderless presence, openness, border, no borders, transparency, clarity, clarity. And consciousness is the reality of your experience. It's not what is appearing on the screen. It's the reality to which the images appear and out of which the images appear. I believe what you said is true. <laughs> yeah, but um, I just feel I don't know it deeply now. Yeah, I just feel like for me it feels like say I'd rather be back in a blissful state. I feel I'm connected with everything and this oneness or unity that is so real as if that is more true than what I'm seeing at this moment. Yeah. Blissful states are are states where the light of consciousness is shining onto the mind. And the mind is sort of noticing that. The light is so, is so strong that the mind is noticing that. There is a beyond those states. So these states are really beautiful because they, they sort of point to they point to consciousness. But the experience of consciousness, knowing itself, is just the, just the sun shining onto itself. It's, it's eternal. I was, I was thinking about maybe like we have this sunny day, then we have a cloudy day, um, and I like the sunny day. You're doing something wrong. You see, it's always sunny. Consciousness is consciousness like that sky, or consciousness is that. So. Like the sky or like the sun? Yeah. yeah. Well, there are metaphors, you know, the metaphors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this, the sky refers to the infinity, the oh. infinity, and the sun to the luminosity. Uh, so it's, it's as metaphors, it's as both. It's, mm -hmm. it's shiny, it's light, and it's infinite. But it's, above all, it's it's an unperturbable peace and a, a sense of freedom that knows no opposite. It is, it's, not like, it's not like freedom versus, some, versus something else. It's just it's a freedom that knows no opposite. And it's a transparency, transparency, transparency of being. But the mind can't experience that. It's still, these words are still metaphors. It's still, at the form level, they're still at the form level. So the self, you know, consciousness is formless. It's formless. 
and the impression of forms arises out of consciousness, out of formlessness. So the, the real form of form is formlessness. The, the, real, the reality of form is formlessness. And you are that. You are this formless presence, this aware, borderless, formless presence. Once you are on the path, there is no turning back. It's a very good thing. It's a very good thing. Yeah, really is. It's very good news. <laughs> yes, it's very good news. Would you say there's no wrong path? It's just some are longer than others? Yes, yes, exactly. Mainly what you do with, with your teacher, your friend, your guide, your, your, your friends, is to make sure you don't take the long, you don't take the 10 mile trail, you take the one, one mile trail. <laughs> they both end at the same point, you know, but some of them, they go, <laughs> circum, circumambulation, 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 some, some of them are, have a circumambulation. Papa G used to say, you know, Get all the way around it. Touch your nose, or you can touch your nose. Right, yes. <laughs> One of the things I keep learning from you, Moby, is, is the power of realization. The realization is there, it's just there to be realized. So, which means to me that I, I have these notions that somehow, let's say I had an out-of-body experience you know, 20-something years ago, and, it, and I imagined that it had all to do with yoga positions and disciplines and all that kind of stuff, but the point is that the reality of it is absolute. It just it's absolutely exists perfectly in my gut at all times. And so the realization of that is just as much as true if I did a thousand yoga positions. Yeah, you could say like that the cause of all insights into consciousness is consciousness. There is only one revelation, which is the revelation of consciousness, and there is only one revelator, and that is consciousness itself. And there is only one subject of the revelation of consciousness, and that is consciousness itself. Consciousness reveals itself from itself to itself. There is no other reality. Waves are made out of water, and it's the water, out of the water, that the wave is arising, and it's made out of water. Mm 
is only one reality of the wave is the water and the wave the form of the wave this impression that we refer to as wave is is water it just gets to this absurd notion of the mind that you think you're doing something I mean, it, it is so therefore let it be so and be with it It is always so, and there is no one to be with it. I just thought of something to add on. You were talking about the, the, the adding suffering onto a situation. It also works on the other side where you, if something's really happening, good, you can add it on and say, oh, now it's happening to me. This means something significant. It becomes, a, 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 there's a useful distinction between a delight and a pleasure. Yes. And if you add on to a delight to try to make it a pleasure, to make it accumulate to you, there's yes. an add-on. It's actually add-on on either side is the suffering. Yes. It doesn't seem like it on the positive side. Mm -hmm. it oh, is. yes, it is. Oh, um, it, uh, uh, many, many, many cases in the, uh, in the spiritual uh, arena. There are there is just that very uh, example that you're saying where people have uh, uh, an, a, an experience where the mind is absent. It's an experience of the revelation of the self. There is no mind. It's just pure ecstasy. But then they, the mind comes on board and says, "Oh, I had this wonderful experience." And then they, then there is all sorts of suffering trying to recreate it. <laughs> so there's a whole. It, it was a timeless experience. It's really a non-experience, but we're using language, so we say use the word experience. But it's, there is no time in the revelation of of the self. It's just just the light, just delight and pure joy, whatever. It's it's not at the mind level. But then the mind makes it a, a me story. Now there is time, and now there is pursuit. Mm -hmm. How do I? What do I? And so on. You see. So often, a guide, a teacher would would point this out to you. Would would, would help you. Will help you to relax that. It's a good thing, and it's not a good thing. It's it's not a good thing in that it becomes a mind activity. But it's a good thing because it creates suffering. So you have both the experience of the consciousness, but you also have suffering. Okay? And that suffering is going to, at some point in time, bring you to, to the teaching. And at the teaching, then the, that revelation that you had, the suffering is pushed aside, and that revelation that you had is, is, is revealed. It, in its fullness. See? So it's all it's all just as it needs to be. It's divinely orchestrated, including as you said, the the attachment to the, the, the good experience. It's divinely orchestrated. Because in any form of attachment, whether it's a resistance or a, or a grabbing, there is suffering. Unhappiness. And unhappiness is always calling to happiness. It's unbearable. It's an un non steady state. It's un uh, unsteady state. Unstable. Unstable. And it's looking for stability. Mm -hmm. So in unhappiness, there is the seed for happiness. There is a, the yearning for happiness.